it's Josh Hayes here with my co-host Chris Cheddar, LPGA Pro, and you're here with NBA legend and current Milwaukee Bucks head coach Jason Kidd. We're in his hometown right here, sitting in this new $40 million practice facility. Jason, thanks for joining us, man. Thanks a lot for having me. Welcome to our new home. Yeah, absolutely. Wanted to talk to you about what's been going on in the offseason. Seems like a lot of different things happening, getting some golf in. You know, what you've been up to? Trying to play golf, trying to learn how to hit the ball straight. Uh, <laughs> it's a hard game. Uh, I was, I think, talking earlier. I have to agree with you. I swing as hard as I can. <laughs> Chris says no one swings as hard as they can. I, th I think with the driver, you are literally trying to hit the ball 400 yards. Yeah. I, that's the, my only approach to that. I don't know. Chris was talking something about 80, 90 percent. I was like, Jason, now we don't know. You always have to keep a little that. in the tank, right? I oh, mean, you know that. Uh, with the driver, I, I think <laughs> I, I, I think it's all. Right. Give, yeah. give air all you have, and hopefully that thing goes 400 yards. Well, we've seen some great drives from you over at ACC here in uh, Lake Tahoe. We got a chance to spend some time. He hits with that you. low riser. Yeah. Keep, keep it out of the wind. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So maybe for the people who haven't been able to enjoy Lake Tahoe and ACC, maybe you can tell them like what kind of experience that actually is like. You know, when you talk about ACC, it's a, a big party. You know, you have a lot of talented players there. Uh, when you talk about the celebrities, they come out um, not just to play golf, but to have fun with the fans. And uh, you can see everybody lined up on 17 uh, with the boats and uh, guys are shooting baskets, playing catch with the football. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun, and uh, again, besides having fun, there is some pretty good golf out there. Yes, uh, there talk, really is. Uh, the best day was uh, when we all got out to play. Yeah, uh, We right. had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, you guys carried me. Not literally. true, not uh, true. Right. Jason a, was our celebrity mm -hmm. in right. the American Century Championship, and uh, we just had a great day. I was, I, <laughs> I was a throw-in. <laughs> I think we were the one of the only teams that had every player have a caddy. <laughs> so there's literally 12 people on the course. Usually there's Still one celebrity, you know, brings their, their, their caddy, and then the pro-am players do their own thing with the carts. We had 12 people on the course following us. I will say this. I don't think I've seen anybody, at least during the Wednesday or Thursday pro-am, sign as many autographs as you did. You I stopped at every single hole. I've... I would estimate you probably signed something like 300 autographs. I was trying to sign because you guys, I wanted to keep the pace of play going <laughs> so you guys didn't have to sign autographs. But Nobody wants our autographs. <laughs> I'll tell you that. The event tour is for the fans uh, as well as play golf. Uh, being, you know, Tuesday and Wednesday or, and, and also Thursday to be able to sign autographs, knowing that Friday, Saturday, and Sunday you're not going to be able to sign. So, um, you know, you just take, you know, a minute to sign autographs so everybody's happy. So um, we were talking here just before we started the show, and you mentioned that you had just come off a pretty nice golf trip just in this area, so maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Oh, well, you know, golf, I love to play golf. And so uh, when you talk about the state of Wisconsin, I, you know, sometimes everybody talks about the first thing is how cold it is. Uh, but I think when you talk about golf, we have some of the uh, best golf in the world. Uh, when you talk about Sand Valley, uh, that's new uh, to the state, and you talk about Whistling Straits and then also Aaron Hills. Black Wolf Run. Uh, uh, Black Wolf Run. You know, you talk, uh, we have some, some beautiful golf on the lake, but also some golf that can be hard. In um, your own country club, too. And, and then Ozaki. When you talk about Ozaki, uh, where I'm a member at, uh, a great track. Uh, got to make sure you hit the green. If not, you got to have a really good short game. I've heard the greens out there are extremely tough. Uh, extremely tough. Uh, I don't know. Sometimes we just hope the superintendent is in a good mood. <laughs> so that he does not put it in a bad place. Well, the Midwest grows great grass. I yes. mean, they it, so many golf courses in the Midwest, and they're all in really, really good shape, public and private. No, you talk about, I think, the weather. You know, we, yeah. we have some great summers. Everybody talks about how cold it is, but no one really talks about the summer here in the Midwest. And, yeah. and we've been very blessed this summer to have some great weather. Uh, but the grass, when you talk about the rough, uh, it teaches you how to hit the ball straight, but also... It, you, you have to have a short game because if you don't hit the green, you got to be able to get up and down. And yeah. so it's, it's challenging, but it's also fun. So speaking of uh, rough and you know, tough courses, you had a chance to play Aaron Hills a few times. I believe maybe you could talk to people who haven't had a chance, just saw it at the U.S. Open. What's that really like? It's a beautiful place. I think when you talk about Aaron Hills, uh, just not the golf course, but the people there. Uh, when you talk about the caddies, it's a great experience. You'll have fun. Even if you hit a bad shot, you'll, you'll have thought that you shot under par. 
uh, because the caddies are unbelievable. They and there sure. is only walking out you, at Aaron You can Hills. only walk. So there is someone that's going to carry your bag, just like in Tahoe when we had caddies <laughs> for each player. Right. Uh, but it, the caddies make the experience. And uh, if you do hit it a little left or right, there is something called fescue. <laughs> 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 that is not your friend. Uh, yeah, if but, you can find it. <laughs> if you can find it. And a lot of times the caddies are great. They'll find it. And they'll give you the advice to maybe take a drop or just try to not try to not to advance it, you know, more than 20 yards. Just hit it out sideways so that you can continue to keep playing and try to make a good score. So what's your favorite hole out there at Aaron Hills? Uh, well, like I was asking Chris, what did she get on number nine when she played? And she says she birdied it. So uh, I like <laughs> that's my favorite hole. <laughs> <laughs> I like one. I like the way one sets up because uh, it's a par five. Uh, you have the opportunity to get there in two. Uh, or you have opportunity to get there, you know, in the regulation to have a birdie putt. And so I like one, and I, and I love nine. I think nine can play as long as you, you want it to be. Uh, it's a short par three. Uh, but if you get left or right, you're in one of those bunkers, and it can become very hard. We were playing the white tees out there yesterday, and on one of the holes I, I said to the caddy, I go, well, you know, how far, how long is this hole from the, from the back? And it was as far back as it was to the green. I mean, so oh, there's a lot of real estate out there. There is a lot of real estate. And there's, uh, when you talk about when they played the tournament there, um, there's some holes that they, they back the tees up a long ways. And crazy. So you did, we didn't crazy. see some of you them. You can't even see the fairway for some of them. You know, hit it here and hope that it gets to the fairway. So what's the toughest part of the course or aspect, You would you say? Is it the fescue? Is it the greens? I think uh, the underrated part is the greens. I think, uh, you know, they're not where they're really, you know, hard breaking right or hard breaking left. Uh, they're very subtle, but if you don't know which way it's, they, they run away from you, uh, you can hit some chip shots in there that just kind of continue to keep rolling and rolling, and you go stop, stop, and they just keep rolling. <laughs> and same with putting. If you're going downhill and you don't know it or with the grain, the ball will just continue to keep rolling. So I think the greens are uh, something that people really don't talk about until after the round. <laughs> so when you get out to play, who, who's out in your foursome? Who do you like to play with? I like to play with my coaching staff. Um, I like to put those guys in a, a different environment. Uh, <laughs> some of them can play. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I have a couple friends that, you know, live in Arizona that we try to get together in the summertime to, you know, give each other a hard time. I don't think it's about golf. I think it's just to see who can embarrass who. <laughs> do you like to, do you guys gamble when you're out there? Uh, we like to gamble. Uh, and, and when you're playing with your coaching staff, is it usually the same teams or do you mix it no, up? No, we got to mix it up because yeah. you want to, uh, you want to get everybody's money. So, <laughs> so you don't want it just to be two guys. Yeah, you right. can be sneaky about that. People don't realize that you've been winning all the money <laughs> yes. if you keep mixing it up. Yeah, so you keep <laughs> switching partners and uh, hopefully uh, that partner can help you win a couple holes, but you want to be on the winning side all the time. So. As being the head coach, I think I could dictate. Uh, who, who, you pick the team. Yes, yeah. whose money I want. <laughs> but but it's you know I think it's a great game to get out with friends and then also meet new people. You know when you show up to a country club or to a, a public course to be able to play with someone different, um, someone that you don't know because I think just the nerves of of, of not knowing who you're going to play with. Uh, mm -hmm. You know when you show up sometimes could uh, help you. Yeah. And, and sometimes it can make you look like you never played the game before. <laughs> so it becomes very humbling. Interesting. Uh, so let's talk about um, some of the players that you've played with here in the NBA. Who was the best golfer uh, out there during your time when you were back in your playing days? I would say uh, Ray Allen. Uh, Ray Allen and, heard about and, Ray Allen and, uh, game. Is, uh, is very talented. It's like his jump shot, very smooth. Mm -hmm. Just like Steph Curry, you know, his, his golf game is just like his jump shot. Yeah. Uh, very smooth. Uh, they know how to play. Uh, they play within themselves. Uh, they, they understand uh, what's the risk uh, if, if it's a tough shot. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes they are very humble in taking the you know, penalty in the sense of giving a stroke back, but not trying to hit a heroic shot um, like myself. <laughs> so, you know, and that brings me back to American Century Championship. There's a, quite a good amount of NBA players playing in that event year to year as well. We saw Derek Fisher out there, yep. Dell and Steph Curry, Charles Barkley, uh, you know, and, and yourself. What would you say is like the percentage of like professional athletes or NBA players that are actually playing golf? I think uh, when I first started playing golf, there was probably a, a, a small percentage of basketball players playing golf. MJ was probably one, Dell Curry, a lot of the old school. Now you can see it, you know, picking up J.R. Smith is playing golf, you, you know, Steph, 
Yeah, man, Kadala. You know, I think most of the Golden State Warriors are, are playing Thompson. golf, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So being on the West Coast helps, right? Because uh, you can play all year round. Uh, when I got to Phoenix, that's when golf for me really picked up. Mm-hmm. Uh, not just because of the weather, but also uh, Danny Ainge liked to play, you know, golf, and he was our head coach at the time. Right. So we we got to get out and play a little golf during the season. Did you ever play with Charles before he developed the hitch? I, I did <laughs> not get a chance to play with Charles before the hitch. I got to play with Charles with the hitch. What's incredible is that he can hit the ball. And he yeah. can hit, when he does hit it, he hits it a long way. Um, now the hitch has turned into one arm swings. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just hope that uh, one day he can get back to playing because he was very good. You know, yeah. he, was a, he was a low handicap player uh, until that hitch came. I mean, he could shoot high 70s. I played with him before he got the hitch. And he was a you know, high 70s shooter that was getting better. I think he would have been a scratch player had that not happened and it just snowballed, you know? It, it snowballed fast. Yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, for Charles, he could be stubborn. <laughs> no. <laughs> a little bit. Really? A little bit. <laughs> if we can get Chris back in coaching Charles and we can get him to a point where it's like Hideki Matsuyama, he turns just it into a, a Matsuyama, just a pause. Just a pause. Instead of like a full hitch. Then he's back on tour. Dude, I think Chris can do it. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think that's a great bet. The next, the next project for you, Chris. There. Chris, Chris can the Cheddar Project. With the pause at the top. Well, know. the pause is what got him in trouble to begin with. I Somebody so. told him, you, you know, just give it a little pause. And I can tell you exactly what was the problem. Is he had the club face so closed at the top that he knew he had to fix it. You know, it started to get the hitch and then it... Oh, he's became fixed worse it. and worse. Yeah, <laughs> he fixed the clothes part. Now he's got to fix some of the hitches. But it's he, it's a yip at this point. But you know what's best about Charles? He still goes out there and enjoys yeah. himself and has right. a blast, and that's what makes him special. Right. Yeah, I, yeah, he knows he that he's been not going to shoot a great score at ACC, but he's like, oh, I'm absolutely going. You guys are like fresh <laughs> off of surgery too. I got yeah, I got a video hips. of him yes. at ACC where he hits this <laughs> chunk with his driver and he hands it to his cat. He says, "Clean off my driver," and then he starts laughing. He goes, "That's something you don't hear very often. <laughs> Clean off my driver." You know, and I mean, at least he has a sense of humor he has about fun with it. it. And that's what he's supposed to do. I mean, he's not going to shoot, you know, 80, uh, but he's going to have fun and he's going to have to have his driver cleaned off once in a while. <laughs> Uh, last time we talked, you talked about um, playing with President Clinton, maybe yes. one of the like you know most influential people that you've played. What was that like? What did you guys talk about? Oh, it was incredible uh, to be able to play at Quaker Ridge uh, with President Clinton. Uh, it was just four of us out there, and uh, who were the other two? So it was his uh, aide, was 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 one, and one of was one of my good friends, Chris Stone. And so uh, when we were driving up to Quaker Ridge, we we were like, this can't be real. <laughs> this is going to be a no show. When Clinton was in office? Uh, no, he was already out. Okay. He was already out. So um, he had some free time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but he, uh, it was set up through uh, Mark Lazary, and uh, he asked that I want to play golf with uh, President Clinton. And I was like, oh, yes, that would be great. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so Quaker Ridge is where we, we met. And uh, when he showed up, it was like, oh, my God, this is happening. <laughs> and uh, we had a great time. It was a great four and a half hours of uh you know, asking him questions, uh, getting a lesson from him. Really? And, uh, he's a good golfer? He's a really good golfer. He's very competitive. And mm-hmm. uh, it was just, it was a remarkable of his storytelling. Um, because when he talks to you, you actually feel like he's really talking to you. And he, I don't think I blinked for the four hours. That's, that's what I've heard. I've heard that he's just very charismatic yes. and and He all engages in. you. Yeah. He engages you. When he's talking, you're like all in. Were you guys talking about golf or uh, we politics? Talk, we or? talked about golf. We talked about, uh, he gave some great stories uh, about his travels. Uh, and uh, it, it was just, you know, and, and then he gave a lesson, um, which is, I think, incredible that we were getting a lesson from President Clinton uh, on golf. And yeah. so uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. And uh, it would be something that I will always remember. You talked about how when you were playing with the Suns, how, you know, people... Uh, you sort of took your coach's lead. Are, is that happening here with your team? Are they getting out on the golf course at all? Uh, no, we're too young yet. Uh, <laughs> but, we, I, but we do have a couple of players that are trying to play. And, okay. uh, Della Dova is one. Okay. Uh, he's, he's trying to play golf. And then Chris Middleton you know, right. uh, get in there? Is, is getting in there. So it's a great game, and I'm happy that we got a couple guys. Now, Giannis, on the other hand, uh, I saw him uh, at one of the um, 
Top Golf's trying to swing the golf club. He's 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 a couple years away <laughs> from swinging the club. <laughs> That's amazing. And you know he made um, the news for a little bit, a lot of controversy over at EuroBasket with yep. him missing out in the championship. It seemed to me that like there was just a lot of disappointment more than anything else, and maybe it was just overblown. But it seemed like he was really just being cautious. And you know, so maybe you can explain that a little bit. Yeah, I think when you talk about Giannis's uh, summer, uh, his knee was bothering him. And uh, we have to first understand it's about the athlete, not about the Milwaukee Bucks or Euro basketball, but uh, the athlete being healthy. And for Giannis, uh, understanding uh, if he's not healthy, he can't play at a, at a very high level. So for him to withdraw from Euro basketball, uh, it was something that you know he thought about at the age of 22. Is, it shows how mature and the way that he thinks is that you know longevity. Right. You know that he, that he wants to be able not not just to play this summer, but he wants to play. 10 years from now and uh, if you start to have injuries now at the age of 22 uh, you know who knows what happens going forward so uh, it's about his body um, he's very disappointed that he couldn't participate for Greece but I think when you look at the bigger picture uh, with the world games and then the Olympics coming you know around the corner he'll be able to help Greece uh, obtain one of their goals and that's to you know show well in the Olympics and in the world games. And so was that his decision to shut it down? Or? It was it was his decision to shut it down, uh, you know, because, again, he felt that his knee was not responding and that he needed some rest. And so, yes, there's disappointment on Greece's side because it's their best player. Right. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, they're going to have him for a long time. Makes sense. I mean, he's 22, as you said, right? He, he's only 22, uh, and he it's just one summer. I heard a story about Giannis Antetokounmpo that I thought was amazing. I don't know if this is true, but um, uh, I think he was a rookie in the league where he got his first check, um, and he went to, I think, a bank and sent the entire check back to his family um, and emptied his bank account. Right. And then he walks out, uh, realizes that there's a game that day, and he has no money to get to the, to the game. Uh, have you heard about that I've story? Heard, I've heard that story, and uh, we heard that story when we were in Brooklyn. Yeah. And... Uh, and that, and I think the story is true uh, that he had to uh, kind of catch a ride. Catch a ride with some fans yes. who, who saw him and, and brought <laughs> him to the game. Yes. Yeah. And so uh, that's when you know he was he was young, but he was trying to do the right thing sure. and, and send money back home. Yeah. But I think uh, you know Giannis. Giannis is such a special individual. Um, one uh, for someone to help him get to the arena because he's seven feet tall, so you can't miss him. <laughs> Uh, but two, for him not to calculate that he needed maybe a, a dollar or two to get back <laughs> right. to the arena um, just shows that he was all in and sending the money back home to help his family. That's awesome. I, I, I love That's that story. Funny. Yeah. And Can you, the, the fans had to love it, too. Oh, right? yeah. I mean, well, I think the fans love it because Giannis is, uh, you know, he's very approachable. Even though he's seven feet tall, uh, he is he's a, a young kid. And, yeah. Uh, that when you hear that kind of story, it just you know, it just shows what kind of character he is, and he's a, as good as they come, and he's going to be a star in this league. Absolutely. Uh, and we, speaking of star, I asked you this question when we were out on the course at ACC. I said, uh, "How many MVPs do you think he ends up winning when it's all said and done?" Do you remember the answer? I do. I, I said five. Yeah, I was like, I, I expected, I was going to predict two or three because it's hard for anyone to win five, but. It makes some sense, you know, when you explained it to me and you were talking about how young he is. Well, one, his age. Uh, you know, he's 22 years old. Uh, not to take away from the league, the league is very talented and very young with talented players that can also be in that, in that discussion of winning MVP. Uh, but I think what Giannis has started with his foundation of last year's, uh, you know, what he did for us and for us to see him grow, you know, is, I think uh, five is still the number. Hopefully uh, he believes that too. Uh, but I think, uh, again, it's the hardest part is getting that first one. And uh, hopefully here soon that he can get that, that first MVP. Do you feel like there's pressure on you to bring a championship to the Bucks? I, I don't think it's pressure. I think it's a great challenge. You know, I, I look at things as, as a challenge uh, that some people might look at as a pressure situation. But I think the challenge is not to win a championship, but to build a winner. And uh, if you can build a winner that's consistent, uh, one one year, hopefully we can, you know, come through the back door and win a championship. Do you like that? You know, in the whole off season, it's been about what the Warriors are doing, and now the Cavs make this trade with the Celtics, and it's talking about well, 
it's two teams in the East only, and you know, we're, it's, have the Celtics done enough to beat the Cavs, and you know, the Bucks don't really enter that conversation too much. Do you like being under the radar a little bit, or is it a little bit of disrespect? No, I think it's great to be under the radar <laughs> because yeah. the expectations, you know, uh, for us, we we believe the expectations will be higher than they were, you know, last year and the year before. So we got to be able to uh, understand what that means and to be able to handle it. Even though we're not talked about in the first, you know, first two teams when you talk about Boston and, and uh, Cleveland, but we feel that we're right there. And so hopefully, uh, at, at the end of the season, we could be talked about as being one of the best in the East. I'm right there with you. I think you guys have a great team, maybe a piece or two away. There's a lot of pieces that were moving, too. Uh, you know, Paul George, Jimmy oh, yeah. Butler. Were you guys in on a lot of those conversations? Were you close? We heard about different teams, like, almost getting Paul George. You know, how'd that go for you guys? Well, we had interest. I think when you talk about star players, you always felt like you want to be able to add another star with Giannis. And so, um, unfortunately, he went west. When you talk about Paul George, he went west. Uh, Jimmy Butler went west. <laughs> Uh, a lot of a lot of talent left our division. You know, unfortunately, we weren't be able to get them. But the nice thing is that they did go west. <laughs> right. Uh, so out so, of the eastern. So, so we only have to see them <laughs> twice. <laughs> uh, let's talk about golf a little bit more. Uh, w when you get into the season, is it something where you don't really have too much time to play, or is it the weather out here that doesn't really lie? Is it a combination of both? No, I think you know during the season it's hard to play. Um, you know, as a player you get a little bit more free time. As a coach, there's a, a lot going on um, where you're always preparing for the next day. You're always trying to figure out to put out a fire that's somewhere <laughs> that's coming. Um, and then also you got to try to figure out who hasn't touched the ball. Who, you know, maybe you got to play to someone a little bit more. And then also match up. You know, who are we playing here in the next week so that, you know, you're always thinking ahead. So time-wise, no, I don't, I don't get to, you know, play as much as, as, as I did as a player. Maybe putt in the office uh, <laughs> while, while you're trying to figure out a problem uh, or figure out a player or while you're watching a, you know, a video of, of your opponent. Just maybe some putting. Uh, I would say chipping, but I'm afraid in a new building, the chip, that might skull, <laughs> I might skull one and put a, a hole in the wall. It, so. it seems like there's a lot of room. I, you sh should be able to set up a video studio or uh, something. You, you there know? is a lot of room. We should be able to have a net. Right. There you go. Hat, you know. A lot of great thinking here, right? happens while yeah. you're hitting that's, balls. That's right. I agree with you. And so uh, after we after the season, we can win. Then that's when you go back and say, hey, we need, there to, you go. We need, right. we need to figure out this room. We have some extra <laughs> space. Can we put this in? Nice. I like it. Um, you're considered one of the greatest point guards of all time. Um, who, in your mind, is the best overall point guard? Ah, thank you for that compliment. I, I, you know, there's so many great ones out there. When you talk about Magic, uh, John Stockton, um, Isaiah Thomas, uh, Oscar Robinson. I mean, the list goes on and on. You pick one for your team. You start a team, all any any one of all time. Who do you pick? Oh man, is Giannis playing point guard? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's kind of a point forward. I, I think you you have to take him out of that. Okay. Is LeBron playing point? <laughs> okay, he's playing point forward too. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, he is. Um, I, you know, I, I, I think Magic. You know, Magic was my idol mm -hmm. uh, when I was, you know, growing up, wanted, watching Showtime, watching him, uh, you know, smile and have fun playing. You know, that's that's what you know. He loved passing the ball. He loved making his teammates better. Uh, but when it came down to it, he was he wasn't afraid to take the game winning shot. Um, and so he knew he was a winner. He knew how to win at the highest level, but he knew how to have fun. And that's, you know, something as a kid that, you know, caught my eye and that's who I wanted to be. Interesting. Who uh, in the NBA now do people say this is the new Jason kid? Uh, there's, a, I guess, the kid out of uh, L.A., the ball kid. Um, Lonzo Ball. Lonzo Ball mm -hmm. um, has, I guess, have, has gotten a lot of comparison. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think uh, watching him in Vegas – I thought, again, he understands the floor. He understands the situation. He, you know, finds the open guy. Um, only time will tell. Right. Um, he could probably, he might be better than I am. If you see Hat jump shot, which looks, I'll just say ugly yeah. <laughs> right now, right. Uh, but goes in the hoop. Uh, I mean, didn't go in the hoop too much in, in summer league, right. but I mean, it just looks unorthodox. What do you do as a coach? Do you try to fix that? Yeah, I think, uh, one, yeah, you, you got to try to fix it because, uh, you know, there's going to be times where the defense is going to sit on it. And so uh, for him is to, to make the game, I think, uh, 
being a young player in this league, uh, you don't understand how, how do we, how can I make the game easier for you, right? Right? Because you rely on your talent. Mm -hmm. um, but as veterans, those words are key because when you can make the game easier for me, I can play longer and I can be more efficient. And so for for Bo, I think you got to look at him being able to work on the jump shot because of being able to go only one way without it being, you know, defended well. Speaking of basketball and sports and Nike, we were actually sitting out on the driving range um, waiting for everybody to, um, you know, finish up their shots so they could get out on the course. And I see a guy sitting out down in all Nike gear um, from like 40 <laughs> feet away. And I was like, well, that looks like somebody who's playing right now. That looks like somebody who's in a league somewhere. And then I stepped 10 feet closer and it was you, it was Jason <laughs> Kidd. So uh, is there like a Nike after, like, you know, retirement program where they keep you on? Are you still with Nike? How does that work? Yeah, I'm still with Nike and it's, you know, basketball. Um, luckily, I get some of the golf stuff. I've had a great, you know, run with Nike. And so I think they do a great job with the retired athletes or mm -hmm athletes that are coaching uh -huh. and so uh, I'm still on their program trying to help uh, with the younger generation you know trying to pass on what I learned uh, about the point guard position uh, so that they can so again the game can be easy uh, because you have so many young guys that are playing the game at a very high level early in their career which is amazing uh, that it didn't take them three or four years to understand what it takes to be successful. So uh, I try to give back that way, and, and I'm lucky to be a part of Nike. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I, and I've seen they've done the same little things with uh, Bo Jackson, as yes. an example. It's like, yes. like well into his retirement, still wearing Nike in his garage. You oh, know, no, it's for like, sure. I think uh, what, what the swoosh has done for athletes, and, you know, when you talk about uh, the equipment, you know, when you talk about shoes and, this, you know, being able to play 19 years and have that opportunity, you know, to, to survive that long, it, it, the equipment helps. Yeah. You know, and so to be able to have the right shoes, to be able to perform at the highest level, you have to thank the swoosh. Uh, love the swoosh for sure. All right, so this is the part of the show where we call it the rapid fire segment. So okay. we're just going to ask <laughs> how, you. How fast is rapid? Uh, <laughs> well, you're pretty fast, so I feel pretty confident that you'll be able to handle it. Uh, okay. Just first thing that pops into your mind when I ask you the question. Okay. okay. Uh, favorite golfer? Besides Chris Cheddar. <laughs> Chris, Chris, I always say Chris because Chris hits the ball straight. It has a big time game. Uh, male, I'm going to go with uh, Tiger Woods. Um, favorite dance move? Oh, two step. Oh, <laughs> one step that way, one step that way. <laughs> uh, favorite game show? Uh, Jeopardy. Best place to eat in town? Carnivores. Steak, steakhouse. Steakhouse. Yes, steakhouse. Awesome. The Bucks win how many games this year? Fifty. Fifty. Good solid number. Yeah, right. that, it sounds good too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> How many wins does a number one seed need? Uh, I would say 60. The last time we spoke to you, uh, you said that I could be assistant GM. Okay. <laughs> and Chris would be my assistant. And we were going to sit in your offense, you know what I mean, make some trades. Oh, yeah, we got to right. make that happen. Okay. Uh, we're, I'm still in for that, definitely. So right now we're going to trade you to the Cavs. Okay. okay? <laughs> just for, just for the today. And you're the Cavs GM. All right. All right. Knowing what you know about that deal with Isaiah Thomas and the hip, do you still do that deal? Yeah, I still do that deal. An all-star player, averaged over 25 points, um, knows how to play the game at a high level, is not afraid of the big stage. So, yeah, I, I do that deal. Would you rather have a hole-in-one or a trip to the Eastern Conference Finals? Oh, um, oh, I got to take the Eastern Conference. I was going to say that. There's even, there's even <laughs> a question well, so there. A hole in one is so ways. fleeting. Oh, yeah. I, <laughs> no, he, well, he can play two ways. Cause, like, I, he's going to get there eventually. Yeah. That's true. I mean, yeah, that's but true. I, I would like to get there, you know, this, this year. year. Right? <laughs> yes. yeah. The hole in one could come next year. That's right. All right. Um, last question for you, and we'll let you go. We know LeBron James is going to be a free agent. All right. You're the coach. I'm LeBron. What do you say to me to make me come to be a Milwaukee Buck? Uh, do you want to win uh, more championships? We have the personnel to do that. Yeah, I love it. Wait, I have a question. Um, most difficult sport, basketball or bowling? Oh, bowling. <laughs> that is hard. <laughs> it, that is hard. throwing me a bone here. <laughs> or throwing me under the bus. I don't know which one it is. Just throwing you a bone, but you get the split. That, that's hard. Yeah. So that yeah is the hard. split. Can you get the split? 
Seven ten. I yeah. have made the seven ten once. Oh wow! Yeah. I mean, how would I know you if you hit that shot? I'm yeah. I am impressed. All right, well, golf fanatic, NBA legend, Milwaukee Bucks head coach Jason Kidd, Chris Cheddar, Josh Hayes. Thanks for watching and listening. We'll see you next time.